Hey everybody, it is Maureen and Rob, AKA the Stromads, your tequila tasting nomads. And this afternoon at It's Time for the Vine, we are gonna to talk to you about this interesting find. Well, we're gonna to talk to you about Trace Barracus Añejo tequila today. I don't want you to get too excited about this tequila because it's not gonna be at the top of our list, but we're gonna use this today to share some tequila tasting tips with you that we think are gonna really enhance your ability to buy and drink better tequila. So let's look at this. Trace Barracus means three barrels, but I bought this because of the marketing. Look at this package, man. It's got this cool box. Honey. It's all <laughs> sealed here. You gotta break it open to get in there. It's got a leather bound wrapped bottle and it's got a story. You know we like stories. So that's, I kind of bought into the marketing on this. And look, here's another bottle we had that, again, great story, Dos Armadillos, that is a great bottle. It's great marketing, and that's kind of what we want to talk to you about. But let's talk a little bit about Trace Barracus. It is unique. It does have a story. It means three barrels, and that's what makes this tequila unique. It's a small batch blend of Añejo tequila aged in three different barrels types of barrels. So first, it's aged in American oak that was previously used in Tennessee whiskey for four years. It's called triple cast maturing. And after that, they blend it in. The second type of Añejo comes from a tawny port barrel. Mm. And then the third blend is as an Añejo aged in ruby port barrels. Mm. So that's what makes this unique. It's a new limited edition. It's only 3,000 bottles and it gets its color. If you look down in the bottom, it's nice uh, amber color. It comes from the barrels. Well, I'll tell you, it has a lot of promise. So why don't you unwrap it? I'll tell you what the uh, tasting notes say. The oak aging gives it some red fruity notes. Um, that's what the tasting notes tell us. And the tawny <laughs> <laughs> port barrels give us warm layers of dried red roasted fruits and uh, soft tone. So we'll see. We'll take a little bit of a taste of it. Actually, we are already cheating because we drank it over the weekend. <laughs> so our tasting notes, we will tell you that uh, the first sip was a doozy. Got a lot of alcohol on it. We were not convinced that we wanted to go much further than that. But after about the third or fourth sip. It kind of wore on us and it actually, it was okay. It was nice to sit around the daytime fire enjoying. It didn't kill us. It was, it was okay. So I think part of that is you get used to it. Maureen always talks about the second sip, the first sip, coach your palate and get Wakes you going everything there. everything up, gets the party started. But really sometimes you have to let it open up like a bottle of wine. So we're going to try it again today and see what we think. Mm. So there's that party. <laughs> Still gives me a little bit of alcohol in that back throat there. Just have to yeah. gotta blow that one out. Actually, it, it's not too bad. It's, it's kind of probably sweetened up a little bit. I like it. It's got a little bit of a caramel taste that rolls off the back of your tongue there. And it is a little- you can smell that nice oak in it. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. smell that. And it's got a little bit of heat to it. It's got yeah. a little bite to it and it really has some spicy, some peppery. It's not something that obviously we're gonna throw out. Never, <laughs> never throw out. <laughs> never, never throw out tequila. Probably wouldn't be on the top of our to buy list, the price compared to some of the other things that we do, but it's also, it's a good sipper, it's a good taster, and if we're not finished by the weekend, we might share it a little bit. Well, I guess here's the thing, it looks, like an expensive bottle so it makes a really pretty gift uh, if you're going somewhere it's not a horrible tequila it's not one of the best but you know a lot of people don't really like a lot of those um higher not even higher end um additive free tequilas because they have a big agave taste on it, it smells out pretty nice it's all right it's you know 
it is what it is. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we get going. This, this tequila is, we talked last week about noms. It's made at nom 1416. This particular nom has produced some pretty notable tequilas mm -hmm. in the past. Clase Azul was produced here, Casamigos. Uh, currently they produce Avion. Also uh, quite a few others on site. Interestingly, Terramana, the Rocks tequila, is produced in the same building. Well, it's an add-on to the building and it has a different nom. And that's, again, marketing to make it seem as though maybe this is a small batch, what do you call it, boutique tequila? Well, it's really not. <laughs> Produced in a big distillery. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, again, the power of marketing and sure. what we're going to talk about. There's probably, when I looked at uh, Tequila Matchmaker, gosh, there was probably like at least 15 or 20 different tequilas produced out of here, out of this distillery. We're gonna to talk to you a little bit about how most of them are made. The best information we have says this is what they call a diffuser tequila, which refers to the way the agave is cooked. This isn't the best way to make tequila. It is, however, the most cost effective, the quickest, and the most efficient. That's great for the bottom line, not necessarily great for the palate. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk about the three ways that tequila is actually cooked. So the first way is the diffuser method. And as Rob was saying, it is probably the most efficient way, the fastest way, but it is probably not the best way to cook tequila or to cook the agave. What they do is they reduce the time. Well, it normally takes seven to 10 days mm -hmm. for a baked tequila that we'll talk about, the Hornos. And then in the middle, you've got an autoclave, mm -hmm. which is a, a quicker process as well. It takes like about eight hours in that. This actually can be done bottle, plant to bottle, in 24 hours. Ah, oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, they, they can even, they actually even use the unripened, not matured agave, the agave. They throw it in a big vat, mix it up with uh, some chemicals and cook. Sometimes it's not cooked even. It's yeah. just the chemical reaction process that brings out the converted sugars. The next way is the autoclave. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, the autoclave is a big, basically a steamer. They can put a lot more agave in there. It slows the process down to about eight hours just for the cooking, it uses high pressure steam. It, it can really produce some decent mm -hmm. tequilas. Yeah, sure. And then we go to the final way is the hornos or the old fashioned brick oven. Yeah. And that process takes 24 to 36 hours to just cook the agave and then it almost has to cool for a day before mm -hmm. it comes mm -hmm. out. So that whole process, like I said, can take up to about 10 days. So you can see, you can either do it in a day with the diffuser process or 10 days with the labor intensive baking hornos process. So your choice. We have some other Stro tips that we want to share with yeah. you. So for that though, like most things in life, it's worth the wait. It is worth the wait. So here are tequila stro tips. Number one, do a little bit of research. Find out how the tequila is cooked. Tequila Matchmaker is a great source. My favorite app. Don't be fooled by a pretty bottle out there. We have seen gorgeous bottles that have really not good tequila in them. Don't judge tequila by the price tag. Again, price is determined by supply and demand, not quality. There's plenty of tequila right now, so supply isn't an issue. What creates demand? Marketing. Marketing. Which brings us to... Just because a celebrity endorses it or puts their name on it, it doesn't mean it's a great tequila. It's all marketing. Great I mean, marketing. Look at back when we talked about Siete Leguas compared to Patron. That was all marketing. Don't judge a tequila on its price tag. Absolutely. Just because it has a big price tag means it's probably got a big marketing team, mm -hmm. a great celebrity endorsement. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a great high quality product. 
That's right. A lot of the tequilas that are additive free, made the old school way, they're under $70 for a bottle of Reposado or a bottle of Añejo. Don't be fooled out there and try something. Try some of the ones that are additive free and that they are made the old school way. I think you'll enjoy them. Well, the other thing is, bottom line, if you don't, drink what you like. Drink what you the like. The big thing is, if you like it, drink it. That's, That's what right. works. That's right. If you enjoy it, you do it. If you're inviting us over, we'll enjoy it with you. <laughs> Pretty excited. We've got a uh, big shindig coming up this weekend that we are gonna try three of our favorites with a whole bunch of our favorite friends. So we look forward to reporting back to you. Uh, maybe we'll do a little video with them. What do you think? We'll see what happens. <laughs> you never know. You gotta stay tuned. We're the Stromads, your tequila tasting nomads, and we'll see you next time. Subscribe Cheers. below. Cheers.